Today, Precarious plays Lost Kingdoms 2. To the best of my understanding, I think we have all of the transformation type... Well, we have one of each class of transformation card. Mm. So I think I'm going to use this as an opportunity to backtrack a little yeah. and collect some of the treasures from various points in the game. Mm-hmm. During that time... Gosh, that Medusa looks like it's moving backwards when it's coming towards you. It's weird. I'll have to try to see that in the next one. Yeah. Because I am not entirely sure what you mean. Like, I mean, I understand the words, but I did not notice that myself. <laughs> oh, magic crystal, no! Mm -hmm. oh. okay. Such a short, shiny life it had. Yeah. I'll point out the Medusa thing to you in a bit. Whenever the next one shows up. So cool. I think that this game has... Or the series, this two-parter, this two-part series. I don't think that we've given the premise enough credit. I think that the idea of because your your character is like somewhere between a warrior and a wizard, mm -hmm. but just everything being inscribed on cards. That is a very novel premise. Also, I think it is an it's an interesting case where art, weaponized art, uh -huh. is front and center. You know? Yeah. Ah. Okay. I don't. I don't know. I mean, like there are other things that put power on cards, like. B uh, but video games, where also you are you are running around, and they are. So here's the difference. There's a kind of popular roguelike that's brewing. Mm hmm Roguelike trend where stuff is inscribed on cards. And I know that cards are often used as like a proxy for objects of power, you know? Like in Magic the Gathering, I don't think your character is actually supposed to be using cards. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that they are just supposed to represent spells and things. That's the... Well, you know, it's been a long time since I've played Magic the Gathering because I didn't enjoy it. Um... I... Okay, so the thing about Magic the Gathering is that anytime I can divorce it from purchasing power... It's a blast. Yeah, I just never like rich kids win. I always like deck building game. Yeah, stuff. because well that's the thing. I, I think that you would like I think that you would like the rules of Magic the Gathering because you love Ascension. And so I do, do I. Anytime you can divorce it from purchasing power, it's a fun set of mechanics. Uh like the uh remember how <laughs> I got a um a, I think, a legal. It was not a copy that I purchased. I just found it. It was recommended to me, and I was like, "Well, where do I buy it?" And the person was like, "Buy it? How could you possibly find one?" Um, well, no, it's just really old. Oh, I see. But I, I can't remember the subtitle. Mm hmm But it was a Magic: The Gathering computer game from the '90s, and it was. Uh, an adventure game, an adventure style game with like an overworld map. Oop. Where did he go? He might have despawned. The real problem is that um, the wave bird the wave bird um, recalibrated. Oh. Like the it was interrupted. The communications were interrupted and the default position was uh, set badly. Mm. So I started running in a circle. Um, 
whenever I could just play Magic the Gathering and get essentially infinity cards mm -hmm. and just worry about like deck customization and strategies and things. Yeah. Uh, you know, played it for almost 36 hours straight. Like, forgot to eat. Like, that's how compelling that See, is. See, this is what I don't get about collectible trading card games. Mm -hmm. Like, once a, a collectible trading card game is around for a little while, like, there are deck builders where you can be like, if I had it, I would use these 50 cards in this deck and it would play this way. And I'm like, yeah, so then just do do that. Like, just do that. Like, no, it doesn't count if you don't have ownership of a copy of that card. And I'm like, that's stupid, and I hate it. Like, it, it makes me... Well, that's because people that can afford... Like, this is... This is getting into really specific territory now. Yeah. Of, like... The sort of mentality around playing those games. But yeah. what you have there is you have someone with the wealth that can afford to play the games in like the fullest possible manner like in a in a way that they have it, it's kind of like trying to protect their purchase yeah they have ascribed value to something and they are just trying to maintain it they're trying to maintain uh A walled garden, I suppose, would be one way to describe it. Yeah, I understand the the desire to keep everything kind of special, but, like, why couldn't you just enjoy collecting the art and just feel proud about having a manufactured copy of a card and, and enjoy it that way, instead of barring other people from enjoying a game because they don't have... They have access to the rules, but not the card that they want. I mean, for the same reason why anything is held to an elite standard. Mm -hmm. Because by excluding others, by narrowing the playing field, there's a... It increases the... Um, I'm trying to think of the 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 term, the prestige, the mm -hmm. the noteworthiness, I suppose. Yeah. I'm using a whole lot of words when all I want to say is because they're assholes. Yeah. Well, it's like the difference between somebody who buys a high performance car because they love to drive it versus somebody who buys a high performance car because they want to have a high performance car. And I'm fundally, fundamentally opposed to to that idea. But I, I got off topic. Like, collectible trading card games really just burn me. They, like, rub me the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Because it should be... It should not be the way that it is. But that's okay, because... I mean, deck building games exist. Exactly. And are lovely. Oh my god, like the Resident Evil one? Yeah, you know, I don't so even... So cool! That's not even, like, a great game in a lot of ways, but I still like it. Darn it. <sighs> Invisible wall. Like, whenever I play the Resident Evil deck building game, like, as as you go through the game, like, I have, like, visceral reactions to it. What just happened? I canceled the card because I realized it was faster. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was flying like, back. I, I that makes sense. I I was like, you still had card to burn. Mm -hmm. Um. Anyways, but but that is neither here nor there. But oh, uh, one thing, one thing I will say is that the Resident Evil trading card uh, collectible card game. Uh, no, uh, deck building game. Deck Sorry. building game. Yeah, yeah, the deck building game we have of Resident Evil does a pretty good job of making of representing the various modes of the main series. Like the the mercenaries game type, yeah, feels like this raucous, rapid fire uh, score attack. But then the drawing through the deck in like the sort of campaign or story style mode, where yeah. resources are tight and they don't start you with as much equipment, 
that does feel pretty tense because you have to you sort of have to like ante up to explore those areas uh, and you know if you flip over some awful monster and then it murders you it's like oh well just got me to blame mm -hmm. I did that to me I mean I know that I don't know I I, I was feeling like this premise was really not that um, original just because I play a lot of card games mm -hmm. but I don't know maybe I need to think about it some more why don't you try to think of some counterexamples, Jack? Well, I can't think of a single video game. You're gonna have to give me some time. Well, maybe like what? Like... <laughs> 23, 24 hours? <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs>